Today is Thursday, January 12th, 2023. My name is Becca and welcome to my sewing room. A couple of days ago, I did a live stream where I shared my 2023 quilty goals. And one of the things that I did is ask you, what type of content do you want to see more of on my channel? And a lot of you told me you really like vlogs. You want to see more of those. So this is me starting a 2023 vlog. We'll see how it goes. But as of right now, my plan is to upload a vlog every single Thursday through at least the middle of March. And then we'll revisit the idea around that time and see if this is something I want to continue doing or change up a little bit. In my weekly vlogs, I'm going to bring you behind the scenes to share a little bit of my personal life with you, but also share with you the progress that I'm making on some of those projects that I'm tackling. Since we are just under two weeks into the new year, I figured the first thing I need to do is tell you about all the things that I've done so far in this year. Well, the first thing that I did was finish some projects. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago during my live stream, I pulled out two charm packs of the Vintage Christmas line by Bonnie and Camille. This is a line that is out of print. You can't buy it unless you go to Etsy and you pay an outrageous price for the out of print fabric anymore. There are charm packs that I picked up a while ago and they've been sitting on my shelf waiting for the perfect project. One of the things that we enjoy doing in our new home is hosting dinners for the holidays, but I don't have any special placemats for my table, so I wanted to make some. I pulled the Vintage Christmas Charm Packs from Bounty and Camille off of my shelf, and I cut both of those charm packs into two and a half inch squares. So I got eight sets of two and a half inch squares from that line. To make one of these placemats, all you really need is 42 two and a half inch squares and you sew those squares together in a scrappy order so it doesn't matter where the fabric goes. You need six rows of seven, sew them together and you're done. I had sewed probably three or four of them together during a live stream, but that left about half of them to still do. So this past weekend, because I've not been feeling great, instead of recording videos for YouTube, I decided to take the couple of days to do some personal sewing for myself. So I pulled the other charm pack out, I cut it up, and I sewed it together, and I am now proud to say that all eight of my placemats for Christmas are pieced, which is great. I am... 11 months ahead of Christmas 2023. <laughs> I don't know right now if I want to add borders to the placemats before I quilt them or if I just want to quilt them as is. Let me know in the comments down below what you would recommend. Would you add borders or would you just quilt them the way they are? For those of you that are going to ask before borders, they're measuring around 12 inches by 14 inches. After those were all sewn together, I felt a burst of energy and I wanted to start tackling another UFO, but I wasn't really sure which one to pull off of the shelf. So I went for my oldest one. Now, this might not be as old as some of your UFOs, but is the oldest one that I have. A couple of years ago, I wanted to do a block of the month or a sew along on my channel, and I did that when lockdown for the C word started. I pulled out a pattern book that I had had on my shelves that gave you recipes for a whole bunch of different blocks and a beautiful fat quarter bundle that I bought from Ginny Byer Studio in Great Falls, Virginia before she retired. And I got to work piecing 12 blocks that I just loved together. Once all those blocks were pieced together, I put everything in a bin and I kind of just forgot about it. The blocks have been sitting there for gosh, almost three years now, and I have not pieced them into a quilt. But that changed this past weekend because I pulled all 12 of the blocks out. I sewed them together with no sashing. I just sewed the blocks next to each other. I added a inner white border to add some negative space to the blocks. And then I found this beautiful grunge fabric that just matches the blues and greens that are in that quilt absolutely perfectly. So I had to use that. The quilt top, I am proud to say, is now completely pieced and ready to load on the long arm. So we are just less than two weeks into 2023 and I am making great progress because my UFO pile back here is being pieced, but things aren't getting finished because they're going over to the pile in the corner 
to be quilted. And I can't really count the project as being done until it's quilted and bound and legit completely done. So over the next couple of weeks, I want to spend some time on the weekends actually loading quilts on the long arm and getting them quilted and then pulling them off and getting them bound. That way I can make room for some of the quilts that I know are going to come off of my shelves in the next few weeks and make their way over there. There are two projects that I am actively sewing and will continue to give you updates on over the coming weeks. The first one is a braid quilt. I've been thinking about a braid quilt for a while and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a French braid or a friendship braid. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't even know what the difference is. I just wanted to do a braid quilt because I think they look cute. I did one of these for a table runner using some ombre fabric a few years ago and it was absolutely gorgeous. And I've been wanting to do one in an actual quilt top. So yeah, Quilting has a French braid tutorial and a free pattern on their website and I'll link to those in the first comment down below in the description box in case you want to check that out. But I decided I wanted to try my hand at it so I went shopping in my stash. Really all you need is some background fabric and a jelly roll. So I pulled a Java Batiks jelly roll featuring some absolutely beautiful teals which remind me of the Caribbean beach <laughs> and some white background and I got to work. I have decided though, my jelly roll has two strips of each print. So rather than making it scrappy, I can be strategic in the placement of my fabric to build out the braid so it looks ombre when you take a step back. Each angle can have the same fabric on the left and on the right. And so your V will be formed by the same fabric. And that's just gonna add to the ombre-ness. Is that a word? of the braid. I did make two of the French braids and then I decided what if and I decided to grab some white fabric, cut up some two and a half inch squares and start focusing those so that they're at the center of the braid so the braid comes out but then you have that little square in the center. I've seen Donna Jordan and others do this in their friendship braid or friend braid tutorials. Again, I don't know the difference between all of them. I've seen it done. I wanted to do it. So I figured out a way and I started doing it with my next braid. My thought at this point is that I'll take the two French braids that don't have that accent in the middle and put them on either side. And then in the middle, I'll do three braids that have that accent piece in the middle. We'll see how it comes together. The other project that I'm going to be working on is the Jolly Bar for Quilt Along. I'm an ambassador for Fat Quarter Shop and they invited me to sew along with them for the Jolly Bar for Quilt Along and I am super excited to share with you the progress that my quilt will take over the next few weeks. I got to pick out my fabric and that was a little bit of a doozy for me because I didn't know what I wanted to sew with but my sister made it really easy. Last year, Tiffany and I did the Magnolia pattern together and we each pulled our own fabric for it. I pulled Seashore Drive by Sherry and Chelsea, which I thought was a gorgeous fabric line. Well, one of my sisters was here over Christmas. She saw the quilt. She claimed dibs. I've got to quilt that and give that to her, which means I don't have a quilt with Seashore Drive anymore. So this was a perfect opportunity to make a new quilt with Seashore Drive. So I grabbed some Jelly Bars too, to be exact, plus all of the extra fabric that I need. And I'm going to be using that to do my Jolly Bar for Quilt Along. Over this next coming week, I'm going to need to start getting to work on that quilt. I think we're going to be making two blocks every week. So make sure you stay tuned to the vlog to see how my quilt progresses. I did do one thing a little bit differently though. I made a very strategic decision to use a salad, a Bella salad, as the background rather than using a tone on tone. It was a little bit more economical when I sourced my fabric, but it also allows me to not be frustrated about figuring out which side is up or down. Sometimes those tone on tones, I have a hard time telling which side is right side up. I do have to say it is a little difficult to record a vlog when I have an adorable puppy looking at me through the glass door wanting to come and play. <laughs> 
That's my first installment for my vlog for 2023. Thank you so much for checking it out. I hope you come back next week and see what progress I made on my projects. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye! What are you doing? What are you doing, Beetlejuice? Aw, puppy!